What's up? Welcome to Invisible Walls, episode 61, the E3 hangover episode. Looking around the table here, I think that's a pretty apt name for this show. I know I got about 13 hours of sleep in about four days last week, and I know all these guys here also put in long hours. First of all, I want to say thanks to you guys for doing such a great job uh, in front of our users, and uh, thanks to you guys who are watching and listening for coming to the site. We set huge records this year for traffic. Um, you'll probably see that in a press release, or you won't. Needless to say, we did one day where we had 11.5 million video views. So thank you very much, guys, for watching. Uh, the show actually did really well over the weekend after E3. Uh, a lot of that was a controversy over Project Natal. Saw a lot of fire on message boards uh, about our comments about that. I was checking out our posts, and there were a couple of people who, you know, decided to go a little bit bananas, and I'm still an X-Bot, and now you're sucking Sony's and yeah, funny how one week I like the Xbox and the next week I like the PlayStation. When will people just figure out that I just that's the don't like anything? We just like games. <laughs> that, that's the point I actually made in a forum post is that people have to remember we are fanboys of games. We right. love games. And it doesn't matter which format it comes out of at the end of the day. I mean, I've been playing Infamous like crazy since it came out. And yeah. I'm adoring that game right now. Uh, does that make me a Sony fanboy? No, it makes me a fanboy of great products. So. Yeah. No one will ever get that. <laughs> no, but we, we could try. We could try we and evangelize. We can sit here and talk until we're blue in the face. It's not going to make a difference. So uh, I'm just going to have another Coke and a smile. Yep, there you go. So anyway, we do have a big show today. We have a big wrap-up of E3. And talking about that stuff on the show this week, we have Marcus Beer. Yeah, I put some crack in my, in my Coke. I'm going to come up with some really bad <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mike Damiani is also on the show today. I'm still trying to figure out what the bottom of my avatar's shoe looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Bam! Bam. <laughs> there just it is. Just don't contort into it, a bloody mess. It kind of looks like the bottom of Lightning's shoe. Have you seen that yet? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Try and find that. Google it. <laughs> All right. Daniel Bloodworth is sitting in today. Yeah, I think I walked more this E3 than any other E3, and yet my legs were never sore. Generally, I lose about five pounds at E3 every year. <laughs> yeah. I had to switch up. I had to go from my dress shoes to my Nike Airs on day two because my feet were killing me. But Blood looks like he's lost weight, which is not a good thing. Yeah. That can't be right. <laughs> I don't change weight. I don't know direction. that it's possible. <laughs> Blood's a pretty thin guy. And Patrick Morales sitting in on the show today as well. Good day. Good day to you all. Yeah. <laughs> The game we would like to see but didn't. And all since right. you guys are all thinking, I'll start Zelda for the Wii. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought we. All, I think we all thought that that was going to be there in some shape. I thought at the very least we'd see a trailer. Instead, we get Super Mario Galaxy. Yeah. Well, interest definitely Two. stoked up a bit for when people saw that you know picture with Link and you no know, sword. Right. And right. Serious girl next to. Him. Yeah. <laughs> but I'd say that's the one game that I was really looking forward to seeing because you know that's always sort of one of those games that you look to to sort of shift the industry in a certain direction or another. All right, Marcus, you got a, got a game picked out yet that you thought was going to be there or you hoped would be there and wasn't? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, <laughs> you can tell us what it is. Starts out with the word Fallout and ends in Vegas. <laughs> I was actually, yeah, I mean, I, I'd actually... <laughs> There's a big surprise. Yeah, I mean, I make no bones about it. They had some DLC there. Uh, but I was, you know, hoping to, you know, to catch a look at it. Um, unfortunately, I never got the, you know, I don't know if it was behind closed doors for the top tier press, of which I am definitely not. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was hoping to actually see some of that. Uh, yeah, oh, I'm a fan of the game. I, you know, I love the game. I'm playing it on PC and, and 360 still. Looking forward to the next DLC. And it was just my, you know, it's one of my favorite games of all time. So, fair enough, Mike D. Um, this was a little bit of a, a stretch, but uh, I was kind of hoping, especially after they showed off. 14, I was hoping they might show a little bit of Final Fantasy versus 13. Oh. Even just a new trailer or something. Right. And the fact I that... I thought you were going to say 15. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 15, yeah. After no. the 14 announcement, hey. Yeah, have we haven't really seen much as far as gameplay of that game. I know. Yeah. I was just like, okay, they announced 14, you know. They're going to they're gonna at least show trailers for versus 13. But just nothing there. I know it right now it's like very early, so it's yeah. probably be a TGS. But I think the publishers too, Microsoft and Sony, they just want people to remember we have Final Fantasy thirteen. But it felt like they're already moving on to fourteen and they haven't really finished all this thirteen stuff yet, so I was like, there's still a lot of thirteen stuff I want to see. It's that and Agito as well. So Well this E three was kind of Sony rekindling relationships with people who really helped them in the past, right? They got the exclusive of Final Fantasy fourteen from Square. And then they got Rockstar Norse new game exclusively. So they're trying to say Grand Theft Auto is yesterday's news. This is going to be the hot new shit 
Rockstar's new game. It was interesting, though, that, that um, Square Enix felt the urge to call a press conference the following day to clarify this whole exclusive to the PS3, right. where they've re they actually said that it's first the PS3 and the PC. You all right there, Johnny? <laughs> We're getting Korean death flu, aren't we? <laughs> we didn't um, get the swine flu at E3. The Japanese developers were right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they, they called this press conference and said, you know, it's, uh, you know, we wanted to correct this misconception that it's exclusive to the PS3, but it's definitely first on PS3 and PC. But they're not discounting the 360, and that's not. Me I actually to, had not heard that. That's not me trying to yeah, be a fanboy. That was me actually yeah, live blogging. Conference. Yeah, live blogging from the press conference. Well, the way Sony handled it was a little. Backhanded as well, you know. They say, "Oh, exclusive Final Fantasy XIV coming out next year," and I, I was just like, "He read the teleprompter wrong." I couldn't <laughs> even believe it. Then he throws to a trailer, and I was sitting there watching the trailer, and I'm like, "Is this a joke?" <laughs> like next year, and then at the end, you see the little online. Yeah, and I was like, "Ah, yeah, no I get it now." Yeah, but for an MMO, a one-year turnaround from announcements, pretty, pretty. Quick. Oh yeah, that's yeah. pretty hardcore, man. No doubt about it. Which kind of makes you wonder a little bit. Yeah, just a, just a little. You think it'll come out next year? Probably not. No, it may, may, may do. I mean, you know, they, have, they have been working on, on this new engine for a while, and they, they said a number of things at the press conference that they're hoping that 11 will continue to be popular and people will play 11 and 14. But you can't transfer things over. You can't transfer. The only thing you'll be able to transfer over is your friends list or, yeah. because mm -hmm. obviously one's over PlayNet, and they want to switch to the PSN. To the PlayStation they are going to go to PSN. That was the yeah, indication. They are ditching their little proprietary network. Yeah, really. So no more. They're, move, they're moving. You'll no. be able to move your friends list over, but the character creation will be very similar in design. But you won't be able to port your character over. There's a whole bunch of other stuff that I have to check my notes on. But All right, people Bloodworth. Can, people can actually just go to annoyedgamer.com and check out my live blog from it. There you go, Daniel Bloodworth. What game did you really miss out on there? Uh, I guess like it wouldn't really classify as a specific or expected game, but. Just Nintendo still not having a new IP. Yeah. You know. And Pikmin 3. Where the hell is Pikmin 3? Yeah, I mean, but even that, like, it doesn't excite me as much as, like, let's just see something that we haven't seen before. Like, even Sin and Punishment choose me. It's like, okay, well, and Punch Out. It's like, okay, well, let's go back to something else from our past. It's like, it, it's like a tunnel vision for the hardcore gamers. Like, well, let's give them something we already know. Well, I think they're using all their R&D and their new development on more on casual stuff. I think that's why we keep seeing this stuff popping up. And they think the hardcore kids are like, okay, we'll give another Mario, another Zelda. They're going to be happy. Well... How long does that last? Didn't yeah. Miyamoto also say that they only have like he only has like a skeleton development team working on Pikmin three? That's why it wasn't ready to show. I up. didn't read that quote. But Apparently, he said it is. There's not enough people working on it. It's not far enough along to show it. What? <laughs> That's what is he working on? That's not, not a good people. sign. We music too. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Gotta make up for uh, make amends on that one. What about you, Morales? Any game that was MIA that you were pretty disappointed in? Huh. Well, for what little footage they showed of the new uh, Kojima Raiden, you know, 360 PS3 game, I definitely would have wanted to see a little bit more of it. Well, that's 360 exclusive, right? No, it's PS3 too. Yeah. It what? Is. Metal yeah. Gear Rising? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But they haven't, an, they haven't announced if it's first the 360. They, they didn't announce it was simultaneous. But yeah, they well, did. They, well, that was shady on Microsoft's part oh, then, yeah, because they, they totally made it seem like it was just they, for the machine. Did, they did make it seem like it, but they neither confirmed or denied that it was exclusive. Right. They just said, it's coming to the 360. I think and we then, probably all just jumped to conclusions. At least I did. I just jumped to conclusions, yeah. and I was like, "Well, if they're showing it in this press conference, then it must be yeah, a 360 I mean, exclusive." It's, it's totally natural to you know yeah. feel that way, but uh, yeah, it is coming to the PS3. Wow, surprised. But yeah, I mean, after all that, you know, tension and build up with you know Kojima's mysterious countdown and a countdown to countdown to countdown. Yeah, yeah. It's his multi-tiered you know wedding cake countdowns. <laughs> uh, he ended up not really showing that much for yeah. for Rising, which was a bit of a disappointment for me. Well, wasn't the countdown really for? Castlevania? Isn't it, was, it was for his was for? Uh, array of announcements. Yeah, all three of them. Yeah. Um, but as a result of that, we did get a pretty cool uh, sneak peek at that Peace Walker game, which is looking really good. Yeah. I mean, it's the core team behind Metal Gear Solid 4. Could Sequel to Metal Gear 3. Metal Gear Solid 3. So I think it's, actually, it's, it's, I think it's it after set, Portable It's abs after Portable yeah. Ops. Before. I thought he said in his press conference it was set after Snake Eater. Also, it, it, it is. It is yeah. Portable Ops in between them. But he almost made it sound like that wasn't real anymore. Like, that's not part of the canon. It's like, what, this is a real lots? part of the... Yeah, yeah it is. Bit of universe re revisioning there. It's yeah. like, this isn't a side story or anything like that. This is the real deal. I'm like, okay. Wait, yeah. I thought Portable Ops was the real <laughs> yeah. deal. I mean, in some ways, I'm more excited for Peace Walker than I am for Rising at this point because Kojima has confirmed that he's coming back, you know, to write, direct, and uh, design the game, which is, you know, awesome. 
I will say I did like see. Raiden a lot in Metal Gear Solid 4. Yeah, I think he definitely won back a bunch of hearts in the process of his redemption. I think I could also see where Kojima was going when he introduced him in Metal Gear Solid 2. I think he mm-hmm. probably had a bigger plan for him, and it was probably tough for him to watch the, the results of the early sort of introduction of that character into the franchise, but I think it paid dividends ultimately in 4. What, yeah. the, what the hell is lightning bolt action? <laughs> That's why I know what the hell that is. You know what? I is think we'll, we'll probably play the game and we still won't know what that means. It's a whole new porn fetish site. It was just like Dissidia. That was dramatic, progressive action or whatever that, you know. Yeah. It's, it's a fighting game. <laughs> yeah. It's just Kojima being Kojima. <laughs> hey, Dom. <laughs> Hi, Dom. Yeah. <laughs> All right, the best booth babes. Mm, booth babes. We're digging deep into the editorial on this one. Oh yeah, I spent a lot of time researching this particular award. Thank you very much. <laughs> I mean, there was well, Mark, therefore Mark you probably have did. the definitive word on this one. Well, I mean, you know, you've got the dirt girls. One of whom was a, a bona fide porn star, uh, Bobby Star, I think her name is. Then she was repping what? She was repping dirt for the Codemasters. Really? The Codemasters booth, yeah. <laughs> Why? <sighs> You know, she's I, not even. No offense, Bobby, but she's not very good looking. <laughs> well, you know, it was a, it, it got some traffic. Uh, then there was the Bayonetta girl who looked like a dominatrix Sarah Palin. Uh, Which who, I actually heard around the show floor that it was the porn actress from Nayland Palin. Really? Which would be I don't know if that's yeah. true. That's just what the word that was going around the show floor. Oh, that would be crazy. <laughs> um, I noticed that the uh, the, uh, the was porn it, the, actress. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Adult actress. Yes. Uh, the Ninja Gaiden girls were, were really quite nice. There were, you know, a couple of girls in costume looking buxom. Then there was the Sony. Tecmo on- always has Tecmo the girls. girls. Year yeah. in and year out. There was the Sony Online girls where they had the EverQuest princess with the spray on tan and the uh, phenomenal knockers. She looked like she wore my ass. Uh, and then they had the agency girl in the black leather who was actually oh. hysterical when I got to got to spend some time talking to her and. Yes, she was good. So Maybe we should look at these as like there. groups. What booth had the best girls instead of just saying that one girl? Oh, well, I mean, you know, Ignition actually had. Uh, they weren't necessarily booth babes all dolled out. They were girls in you know cute little outfits who were you know spokesmodels, if you will, who were talking about the games and they'd been briefed well on the games. Ubisoft had a bunch of really hot girls who were actually Ubisoft employees. That's my vote. Ubisoft gets my vote. The girls in the short shorts with the little tank tops and the headbands. Some of them were, some of them looked like they were employees. Yeah. Some, some of them, them didn't. Some of them looked really good. Some so as far as like the, the quality over a large number of girls, my vote goes to Ubisoft. The hottest girl, in my opinion, was actually the first girl I interviewed on the, on the Ignition booth. Can't remember her name now. She had blonde hair, but she also does a show on Playboy Radio. No. And she was funny, and I asked her, um, you, know, her uh, you know, how do you feel being at E3 2009? And she smiled at me and said, pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> what about you guys? What were some of the girls that you saw that you thought were uh, the, worthy of attention? Hmm, the Atlas nurses. Yeah, yeah, I'd They're agree with that. Good. They were the cute. Trauma team girls. Yeah, the yeah. trauma team girls really good. They seem to be the most popular at the show as well. Most a lot of people taking pictures. Yeah, of them. they were right there, being at West Hall. So hey, good, girls in good spot. Good <laughs> girls in good choice. <laughs> hey, nurse outfit, you can never go wrong. What about you, blood? Did you look around at all? Uh, not much, but I just see Vern Troyer running around. There he's being. <laughs> no. I actually saw him. I saw him on the on the Nyko booth. Now this is the most. No, fun. I have a great story with Mini Me or Vern Troyer, as it will. Well, the thing that kind of confused me is I saw him in his little motorized push buggy, yeah. and he, either he was... Push buggy. Oh, whatever it was, his pram. <laughs> um, it's a lark. He, it was interesting that he was either kneeling on that cushion seat, or he didn't have any legs below the knees anymore. He li- No, he has legs. Uh, here's, here's my story. I was getting a demo of Tony Hawk Ride in this private room in the Activision booth. Get a knock on the door. Someone's... Peeks her head and they're like, Vern Troyer wants to check out the game. And you, it, you would have thought this was like Michael Jackson, the way that people snap to attention. Immediately, all the journalists are getting cleared out of the room and they're like making space for him. He rolls in on his little car and then he like pulls into the center of the room. He looks back over his shoulder and he goes, look out guys, I got to back up. And so he like <laughs> parks his little cart against the wall. So then we do the demo and I actually played in front of Vern and he's like back, <laughs> Vern, he's back there You're like Vern. going, this guy's awesome, like, just going off. And then he plays. And I actually have a picture of Vern Troyer playing Tony Hawk Ride on the board, and hopefully we can pop that up right now so everyone can see. But, yeah, so Vern Troyer played Tony Hawk Ride. He's literally about yeah, he's a tiny. foot, one foot, three inches tall. 
He's absolutely tiny. I mean, his his legs, the width of his legs was probably like six inches wide. So he was standing on the Tony Hawk board, and he could just barely stand on like the one end. But he played very well. Good. well he, not. Better than the every, developers demoed the game. He's actually at every E3. I mean, he's a big hardcore game fan. He was a really nice guy. He took pictures with everybody that I, was in there. Um, yeah. And the booth babes loved him. I saw. I actually saw him at the Nyko booth, and they they were like, I suppose they've seen his sex tape. Apparently, he's a kickstand. <laughs> <laughs> he has a kickstand. <laughs> he has a he's a tripod. Odd <laughs> that, that you'd bring up Vern Troyer when asking about booth babes, Daniel. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. What about you, Morales? You see any girls that caught your eye? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. At Capcom, there's this girl in one of those huge stuffed cat from Monster Hunter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh boy. Are, are, are you telling us you're a furry? Of the week award. <laughs> what, what, what? Is there something wrong here? Are you <laughs> telling us you're a furry? No. <laughs> but that cat was looking pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Oh. All right. Um, that note. <laughs> I, I got nothing. Uh, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we're going to break it all down and give our final letter grade for E3 2009. Marcus? Um, I'm going to give it an A-. minus. I thought, you know, ESA, great job. I thought that it was back to some of the old E3 with the plus of it not being so busy. They, I still saw a couple of kids who were like, you know, 13, 14, wandering around where they'd, you know, they'd snuck in. But that was, I think, more about the convention center security than anything else. Uh, the one thing I will suggest is that they need to make E3 three full days again, and they need to make the third parties do all their, or the first, first party publishers do all their press conferences on the Monday. Sony, Nintendo, Microsoft, give them two hour blocks each, and then everybody can just come to the show, not dash across town, and they can get a full three days. Because I know a lot of people here, a lot of people at, at other companies that I know, they were rushing across town trying to get different things going, and I yeah. thought that was unfair, and that's what I'd change. Damiani? I'm going to give it a B plus. Uh, I, I echo a lot of Marcus's sentiments there. I think the only thing I would want is not necessarily part of the ESA, but m- part, of the, part of the developers and publishers. That I just wish there were a few more games that were announced during the press conferences playable on the floor. Yeah. It felt like this show was a little bit more about next year and what's coming to get that hype going. Yeah. So, I mean, that was good, but there were quite a few titles there that was were announced, weren't playable, a lot. only behind closed doors. Mm-hmm. So hopefully next year they'll have a little bit, you know, be ready for that change of time. Yeah. Bloodworth. Uh, yeah, I'd, honestly, I'd give them a solid A. I mean, I'd love this year's E3. I don't want it to get any bigger again. It wasn't cramped and tiny like last year and not as horrible as the year before, of course. It existed this year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, and, and just like, I mean... Uh, Wednesday, you know, all of my appointments were literally like across the halls. Like I was South Hall, West Hall, South Hall, West Hall all day, and I did not miss any appointments. Yeah. And that's like insane with camera. There's a lot of different, lot of difference between that and walking around Santa Monica all day. Yeah, <laughs> and, but I mean, it, you know, it's like yeah, I got everything done, and you know, and it's because they weren't overloaded with people, yeah. you know. And and so my only real complaint that I've had with the show is that there's still a couple of people like Ubisoft who need to lower the volume a bit. Yeah. You know, I'm like, if I'm doing an interview, I should be able to hear the guy I'm interviewing. That's true. What about you? Well, in terms of raw show content, I'd have to give it a B plus since there were still some announcements that weren't made this year, as well as some games that never made a showing, like, you know, Beyond Good and Evil 2 and you know, a, a bunch of other titles. But in terms of the show itself, I'd have to give it a solid A as well. I mean, I think the ESA finally found a nice, happy medium you know, of the days of E3 you know, gone past and uh, how it should be now. And you know, we still have see a bit of clutter here and there, but nowhere near of a huge outlandish spectacle or cattle farm it once was. Uh, and it, it was good. It was a good show. Me, I give it an A, bordering on an A+. This was my 12th or 13th E3. And on, in all honesty, the only thing I think that could have made it better is new hardware announcements, like new consoles. Those are always sort of the, the landmark E3s. And while we did get the PSP go at, the, at this show, I think that's really the only thing that kept it from being in the top two or three E3s I've attended. I agree with all you guys. Definitely found the perfect balance. Definitely want to give props to the ESA. We give those guys a lot of hell on this show. This is one time where they totally delivered, stepped up, found the perfect medium. I hope the show stays this way. Um, there was room for us to work, yet there was enough people there that it was an event. 
You know, I did an interview with Fox News. Fox News would have been nowhere near E3 last year. So I think they've made it big enough a spectacle so we can get the word out to people who normally may not even pay attention or care. Small enough that we can get our jobs done in a timely and efficient manner. Loved it. E3 2009. Awesome. And how did that make you feel? I wasn't paid to feel. All right, now we're going to talk about a game that's kind of sliding out over the crazy E3 period, which usually means bad things. Usually when stuff like this happens, the game's not so good. And in fact, we just barely got the game last Friday. I did get a chance to play it over the entire weekend in between sleeping. But it's not the case here. This isn't a game that's really bad, and they're trying to slide it in under the radar. For whatever reason, our review is going to be a little late. Hopefully by the time you're listening to this, it's up. But just in case, we're here to talk about it. Prototype, Jump Publishers from Vivendi. Over to Activision, um, they didn't change the game. There was a lot kind of rumor swirling it was going to become a Spider-Man game or whatever. Uh, they're, they're rumored that they're going to take the engine and actually turn it into a Marvel Zombies game. Well, I'll mm-hmm. tell you one thing. This is probably the best superhero game I've ever played. I've never felt more like a superhero than I do playing Prototype. There's no swinging. One thing you realize as soon as you start playing this game is that the swinging mechanic from Spider-Man totally bogs it down. Here... They've instituted a glide functionality instead of having to swing on a, on a rope or on a, a web or whatever. Mm-hmm. You basically can just jump and then institute a glide, and you'll glide out to your next destination. The crazy part is you're literally jumping a city block at a time, yet you can pinpoint exactly where you land. I can jump from a skyscraper down hundreds of floors, and I can land right on top of an air conditioning unit on top of a building. That's how good the controls are. So it's almost like this platformer that's played from like 1,000 feet and I think the best way I describe it, and I described it to you guys today, it's like Assassin's Creed crossed with Crackdown. There's all kinds of little things hidden. It's this huge open world city. You can jump, you know, like, like a superhero. You can literally leap tall buildings in a single bound. Well, it's based, um, I mean, Radical up in Canada did it, and they, they basically turned this, uh, they took the Hulk Ultimate Destruction Engine and totally retooled it. And that's what it was based on. So, I mean, a lot of people may not have played Hulk Ultimate Destruction, which was one of the best comic book games out mm-hmm. there for a long time. And it's probably available on budget. On, you know, it's an original Xbox game. I recommend people pick that up as well because it's a lot of fun. But, yeah, I mean, when I first saw Prototype back at Vivendi, that's what we saw. We saw the New, in the New York and we saw bouncing around and we saw the, you know, the, the powers where the spikes would come up. You shred people. And that was still looking absolutely phenomenal. We just thought, you know, okay, this is a tiny little tech demo vertical slice. But from what I've seen today, and I saw Johnny playing it earlier, it's still looking really good. Well, I remember back when Vivendi showed it to me for the first time I did an interview for the game, and literally the interview went on and on because I asked this guy one question, tell us about the gameplay. And he just went on this tirade that lasted like 20 minutes. I'm sitting there holding the mic, and I'm like, yeah, that's not going to make it in. This probably isn't going to make it. You're going to have to cut that. And at the end of the day, they got it all in. It's almost borderline too much because you have like four or five different categories that you can build up using your XP that you get. And you get XP for doing just about anything. And underneath each one of those categories, there's probably like 20 different abilities that you can buy. So imagine with the buttons and the analog sticks you have, how do you fit that many moves on there? So what you end up doing is doubling up a lot of buttons. You kind of end up finding what works for you and sticking with it instead of using all the different moves at once, you start to discover which moves work on what enemies, and you, you can sort of spam those to get through those enemies. But uh, very pleasantly surprised by this game. I just had a ton of fun with it. One of those games where, you know, throughout the weekend, if I was doing something else, I was thinking about going back and playing it. The wife, you know, would forget to grab something, and she'd be like, oh, I have to go back in and get something. I'd sit down and try to get through one more mission. Crazy addictive, crazy fun. Um, I don't think I've seen an open world sort of parkour game that, that handled like this before. It's just. Well, I'm interested with you saying that. I, I know Blood and I have been playing a sh- load of Infamous. Yeah. Uh, have you have you had a chance to play Prototype? No, I haven't. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually more interested in Prototype now that I played Infamous because yeah. I've totally run Infamous dry. I've been through the game three times. And have you played Infamous? I have played Infamous. And how does this stack up? Because I'm. I, I tell you what, I'm. F- loving Infamous right now. I'm playing it through. I'm loving the, the, the gliding and I'm loving the grinding on the rails and I'm loving just how easy it is to scale buildings and jump off and do the shock waves and you know take out people from a distance. But um, you know that's all electric based and uh, you know prototype has way more potential with the powers. So how does this stack up for you? Well let me qualify it first by saying that I've only played about six hours of Infamous. So if there's parts of the game later on that I haven't got to that are really awesome then keep that in keep that in mind. Um, but I definitely prefer prototype. It's just faster. Um, it's an infamous, it, f- it felt very deliberate at times. Some, some of the stuff felt like it was almost like uh, preconceived where you're supposed to go, where you can go. 
Game is completely free form. You can run up, down, sideways, catty cornered along buildings, jump off whenever you want to, fly wherever you want to. Um, it's just really fast, really smooth. The powers are freaking cool. You know, I watched Daniel play a lot of uh, Proto, or I'm sorry, a lot of Infamous when he was reviewing it. And what I kept seeing was you constantly throwing fireballs or, or electricity balls. Oh, a lot grand. of times when I'd yeah. walk by. Yeah. But this game, it's like there's so many moves that you can do, and all of them are freaking cool. Like you turn into this like pod with like tentacles that come out in like eight thousand directions <laughs> and just kill everything. And there's just there's dozens of attacks like that in the game. So. Well, I really I did enjoy the time that I spent with Infamous. So far, what I've I've played a prototype I like a lot more. It's just faster, sleeker, darker. Um, I, yeah, I think I, w- I would have to pick if I had to pick one to play based upon my limited time with Infamous. I would pick Prototype. The tale of rock is long and fabled. All right. So also during the course of E3, there was a bit of a news tidbit that flew. I guess it, you wouldn't say completely under the radar. We picked up on it. And that is the whole Activision EA Brutal Legend situation. It's actually not EA. EA aren't actually na- named in this lawsuit that Activision slapped out. It's against Tim Schafer and Double Fine. And I thought, you know, that's pissed me off as, as it was. Uh, but I actually decided to do a little bit more digging and come up with some more stuff. And it, so it's kind of working that um, Prototypes is such a good game because I actually don't want to give Activision any <laughs> money. Right I don't want to go buy this game because yeah. some of the shenanigans they've been up to over the last couple of months, beggars belief. It seems that they've got this attitude now that they're the number one third party publisher, they're the biggest, and they're going to people over. So for those of you who don't know about it, um, Activision uh, on the second day of E3, last Wednesday slapped Double Great Fine. Great timing by yeah, the way. <laughs> perfect timing. Slapped Double Fine with a lawsuit claiming with a Double uh, Fine. Yeah, well, they're basically <laughs> trying to stop Brutal Legend from being published yeah. uh, which I think is bang out of order. I mean basically it says that they paid Double Fine 15 million to develop Brutal Legend which, which holy sh- <laughs> but uh, they actually didn't. Actor Vivendi did. This was before the merger. The game was in, you know, before the merger, and Vivendi paid, you know, paid for it, and Vivendi was behind it. Still, uh, holy cow, fifteen million, dude. That's part of the course now. You know, you, you know, uh, you know how much games cost to make now. I mean, that's a <laughs> load of money. But anyway, so this was one of the games that Activision decided to cut loose when, you know, when the uh, merger came through. I mean, they kept prototype. But they cut loose Ghostbusters, they cut loose Riddick, Fear, this one, Wet was another one that was cut loose. Yeah. And they've all been picked up by other publishers and are all looking good. But I just think it's kind of sucky. Um, and it's interesting that somebody from EA made the comment that Activision's actions now are like a guy leaving his wife and then suing her six months later because she found a better looking guy. But then, you know, so uh, Tim, uh, Tim Schafer was actually asked for a quote and he came up with this pearl of a quote. He said, hey, if Activision liked it, then they should have put a ring on it. And then he said, oh great, now Beyonce's gonna sue me too. Uh, so at least he's got a sense of humor about it. I mean, I personally think this is, you know, out of order. I mean, Activision don't really have the best track record recently with regards to launching new IPs. You know, yeah. Prototype aside, which yeah. wasn't in the IP in the But first we'll see. Place. I mean, we don't know how well, Prototype's yeah. going to sell. It may, it may sell. I mean, it's certainly looking like a great game. But, I mean, they certainly, you know, you look at their lineup and it's Guitar Hero, it's Tony Hawk, it's, you know, Call of Duty. And there's nothing wrong with those franchises. Yeah. But they haven't really launched a brand new franchise in a very long time. And I think, mm-hmm. you know, Modern Warfare really became... Well, it's become a new franchise. Yeah, it became yeah. a new franchise almost by accident. Yeah. But I just find it really irksome that they're actually doing this. So I went off and did some more digging and I found out that um, Activision obviously have the DJ Hero game coming out and they had, there's a competitive game called Scratch coming out. Mm-hmm. Now Activision tried to buy this game earlier this year just so they could shelve it mm-hmm. and they didn't want any competition for DJ Hero. The publisher of that game said no so Activision went and bought the developers. Right. They bought the developers out from underneath the, the publisher. The, the development team are still contracted to finish the game but now Activision are being sued by the by the publisher of Scratch because apparently there's been some issues with regards to, you know, the game getting finished on time. Well, shouldn't the publisher have just laid down the gauntlet and been like, "Look, if you let Activision buy you guys, then our deal is off." Well, that's the thing; they don't want they, they don't want the deal to be off because they've been you know this game's been in development for three and a half years. They've invested it's been in a development lot of money. longer than that, actually. All right. Well, <laughs> we've known about it for three, yeah. you know, three and a half years, yeah. but um, I just find you know that kind of annoying. And then I see you know Bo- uh, Bobby Kotick, who is the you know CEO of Activision. He came out after E3 and was disappointed that there was no big uh, console price drops 
this from the guy who's you know two major two of the three major franchises this year are going to rely on expensive f***ing gimmicks in DJ Hero and the Tony Hawk Ride game where they both going to come but in. But that makes sense for him, bucks. right? Because he's saying, well, <coughs> the console needs to be cheaper so people will be willing to spend more money on my plastic. Yeah, but there From are a business so, perspective. But how many, how many consoles are out there right now? Let's let's take a conservative estimate that there are sixty million next gen consoles out there right now. If people actually had well, if you include the Wii in that, then you might be close to sixty million. I'm including. I'm, I'm talking about the Wii, the PS3, and the 360 of this generation. There are about sixty million consoles out there. We know there's forty million Wii, and there's there's about fifteen to fifteen million each of the uh, you know yeah. of the 360 and the PS3. So it's probably more. The games are still 60 bucks. When you add a piece of plastic on, like a, a DJ Hero or like a Guitar Hero drum kit or whatever it is, that pumps the price up to 130, 140 bucks in some cases. If you drop the price on some of those things, or even, you know, God forbid, actually just focus on making great games that aren't gimmick driven, you know, people are more likely to buy a next gen game or a console game at 50 bucks. As opposed to sixty bucks, you will pro- you will probably, and it's not gospel; it's just my logic here. You're more than likely to sell probably about forty to fifty percent more at forty nine ninety nine than you are at sixty nine ninety nine. I think that might be a little generous. Well, you know, in my opinion, this is just the the way you know, having worked on a different side of it. But I just find it really ironic that this this guy comes out and gobs off about Sony, Nintendo, and Microsoft when he's selling games now that actually cost not far off the the full cost of the console. You know, Xbox is one ninety nine. Well see there's they, they call it a platform. They won't call like rock band or guitar hero a game. It's a platform. It's something that they expect people to invest in to get a return on that investment for a long time to come with DLC. It, and, you know, with, with rock I totally agree with you, by the way. I think it, it's wrong what they're doing, and it's pretty underhanded how they went about it. But at the end of the day, they are a business, and they need to turn a profit. And honestly, their CEO is just being a shrewd businessman. I just find it really kind of annoying that this company has, uh, has now got enough firepower to be able to really f*** over small developers, people like Double Fine, people like the guys doing Scratch, and then bitch and moan on the, uh, you know, on the other side about the price of the consoles when they're pulling out, you know, putting out their this is right. This is the the CD side of corporate America, which is honestly one of the reasons I left in-house PR back in 2007 because I got so sick of this bull not being about the games. I'm all about making a dollar. I'm all about people making money, paying their bills, and having a good time. But when you see development teams getting cut, when you get uh, games being cancelled left, right, and centre, if you if you look at it, the Activision uh, Activision didn't really merge with Vivendi. Vivendi bought them out. Right. And they just kept the Activision brand name and they kept the Activision staff on the console side. And they cut a lot of good people who are not working still. No, I, know. I ran into so many people at E3 who are from Vivendi who are really good people and they still can't find jobs in this economy. And it really f-ing pisses me off. So that's why I actually don't think I'm going to be buying Prototype. I think, you know, and I mean, it sucks for the guys at Radical, but I'm really just pissed off at Activision. But I think at the end of the day, the people who watch and listen to Invisible Walls, really all they care about is good games. No, I know. I, <laughs> at the I, end of the day, Activision's you know, making some pretty damn good games. You know what? And I, but I also think there's a lot of people out there, you know, from following the forums and the comments, there's a lot of people out there who will get pissed off because there's a lot of people out there, you know, students who don't have a lot of money, school kids who don't have a lot of money. And this is, you know, a lot of them who have ambitions to work in games. This is the future. I mean, you know, it's the globalization of the games industry, but it's also the but consolidation. every industry is that way, too. <coughs> every, I mean, no every, matter what you're doing. Every industry is, but I'm just, you know, we're putting it out there as a warning. This is, this is the shit that's going down. It's not all about going in and making good games. It's like the music industry in the, in the early 70s, where it started to become owned by the big corporations. Right. And, you know, we're a bunch of stoners, sad stoners here saying, it's not about the games, man. Yeah. Where, what, what happened to the games? Well, I think a lot of kids are, you know, a lot of people maybe getting out of college. You have this idealistic image of what the workplace is going to be like. It's going to be... This big creative sort of potpourri of people, everyone bouncing idea. And at the end of the day, like it's all about the money. Like you have to it make is. a profit, or you can't stay alive. And and ine- inevitably, you have to have somebody like their CEO at the top who has to make shrewd decisions. And it's you know it sucks, but at the end of the day, that's really the reality of, of a successful business. Yeah, I just don't think anybody is worth you know making forty two million dollars or seventy to seventeen million dollars in stock options, no matter what magic they've done when we have you know teachers and nurses and you know people students with student loans that are saddled out the wazoo that is one of the downsides of corporate america for me agree 100 percent
All right, that's going to do it. Quite a robust episode, if I do say so myself. And we missed so much stuff as well. Oh, we could have talked for days about E3, I think. But uh, at the end of the day, we have to call it call it a day at some point, and this is it. Uh, we do have some good news for you guys. We just got some more beta codes for Uncharted 2. So head on over to the GamerPad IW Among Thieves. And uh, we're not going to tell you how many we got, but we do have a good many. You have to send a message. Don't post on there. Just send them a message. Send a message because that's how our system works so we can send you guys the code. So send us a personal message. We'll make sure we get the codes out to you. Hopefully by now a lot of you are already enjoying the codes we sent out last week. Or that was the week before, That I was guess. the week before, and we did Facebook last week as well. We got some extra codes that we sent out, and we had a good response from those guys as well. So thanks to all the Facebook group. You guys yeah. are rock stars. And thanks, anyway, you know, period, guys, for, for supporting us through E3. We know a lot of you guys were living on the site for three and four days, watching tons of media. We really, really appreciate it. Without you guys, we are nothing, and we have nothing. So thanks for watching. We really appreciate it. E3 is going to be even better next year, I promise. I already got some big plans in the works to do some things differently next year. You're doing it naked next year, aren't you? No. <laughs> then no one would tune in. <laughs> but anyway, thank you very much. We'll see you all next week. Invisible Walls out. <laughs>